In this video, I'm going to go over the real-time strategy sample project. If you haven't downloaded this sample project yet, you can get it from the Behavior Designer Samples website. So the first thing that I'm going to look at are these three cars. The first, in this video, I'm going to go over the real-time strategy sample project. If you haven't downloaded this sample project yet, you can get it from the OPSIV website under Behavior Designer Samples. The first thing that I'm going to look at are these three cars. These cars are actually harvesters. These harvesters are going to harvest gold from these two gold fields. Once they've collected enough gold, they're then going to drop it off at the refinery. You will then be able to use that gold to purchase units at the barracks, and those units will be able to go attack the enemy's turret and then the enemy's power plant. So it takes a little bit of an imagination, but it works pretty well for our purposes. The first behavior tree that I'm going to look at is the harvesters. So I've opened up Behavior Designer and here's that behavior tree. The very first task that gets executed is this next gold field target task. This task determines which gold field is available next. Let's take a look at that code. And we can see that it has this gold field manager, or it gets an instance of this gold field manager. With that instance, it will then determine what the next gold field transform is. This gold field manager has a list of all the different gold fields. So here's the gold field manager, and here's a list of the two different gold fields. This next gold field transform method will basically cycle through every element in the array. So first it will return the first gold field, then the second, then the first, then the second, and keep repeating. This next gold field target task will then take that value and assign it to this target variable. This target variable has a type shared transform, and that's used by Behavior Designer, and you can create one within this variables pane. So I've created this gold field variable, and it's a type transform, and I've assigned it to the target variable. So you can see the name gold field right here. This gold field variable will then be used by this next task, this limited resource guard task. And you can see the names match up exactly. So these both of these tasks are pointing to the exact same value. This limited resource guard, guard task is basically a semaphore. If we take a look at the code, or the reason why, the reason that we want this task is if we look at the scene, we can see that there are three harvesters but only two gold fields. We don't want two harvesters occupying one gold field at a single time. So we need to place this limited resource guard to prevent the harvester from occupying the resource if it's currently occupied. If we take a look at the code for that, so this limited resource transform is that shared transform that we had set earlier. So this is going to be a gold field and we're going to get the mono behavior limited resource component from that gold field. We're going to ask that limited resource, is it currently occupied? Now as you can see here, the gold field has this trigger area set up, so this will determine whether or not the gold field is currently occupied. If the gold field is not occupied and the current task is not executing, then we can go ahead and execute. If it is occupied, then we are going to have to wait at the current task. So the first harvester is going to go through just fine because the first gold field will be available. The second harvester is also going to go through just fine because the gold field will also be available. In this case, it will be the second gold field. The third harvester, however, is going to try to go to the first gold field because of this gold field or this next gold field target trans or task. And it will find that that gold field is not available because it's currently being occupied by the first harvester. So the third harvester will wait at this task until that gold field is available. Once the gold field is available, it will seek to the gold field. Notice here the target variable is the exact same variable that we had used for this next gold field target and the limited resource guard. We also have two more variables set up, the move speed and rotation speed, and that's used by this seek task, this seek task, and this seek task. 
Now if we look at the values for that, we see we have 15 and 1,000. Instead of setting 15 and 1,000 for each task, I'm just creating a new variable. That way, if I change this 15 here, the same 15 value will be changed throughout both tasks or all three tasks. So variables are act as a very good way to communicate between tasks. Once we arrive at the gold field, we'll then want to harvest some gold. In this case, we're harvesting two units of gold. After we get done harvesting the gold, we're going to wait a moment to make it look like we're doing something, and then we're going to repeat that a total of five times. Once we get done harvesting the gold, we're going to check to see if the unloading dock is available. Now, similar to the gold fields, the unloading dock has a limited resource component added to it to determine whether or not a harvester is within its trigger area. If a harvester is within its trigger area, then this task is going to return failure and this seek task will run. Now this seek task will seek to the waypoint and we can look to see the waypoint is right next to the refinery. So if we go back to the harvesters behavior tree and here's that waypoint one, uh, we can then look at this next task and this is also a limited resource guard. Now you may think that we don't need this because we already checked to see if the limited resource was available right here. And in this case, if this returns success, then it is available. So you wouldn't think that we would need this. But we actually do because the seek task could return success before the unloading dock is available. And we still want the current harvester or the harvester that seek to the wait point to wait at that wait point and not go to the unloading dock where a harvester is already there. So if that unloading dock is available, then we will seek towards it. We will wait five seconds to unload the gold, and then we will actually unload the gold. So let's take a look at this in action. And the very first thing that you'll see happens is there's two harvesters and they're both going for the gold. So this one's seeking the gold field. This one's seeking the gold field. That third harvester is currently stuck on the limited resource guard because there is no gold field available. So we're just waiting here. As soon as it does become available, you'll be able to see down here. So actually, let me pause it real quick. You can see this harvester is currently waiting a minute. So they're, they're in the process of gathering the gold. And then we'll go back to this harvester. And as soon as they get done, one, as soon as this harvester left its trigger, we're going to see that this seek task lit up. So now this third harvester is finally able to go seek to the gold field. Meanwhile, these other two harvesters, this first harvester is seeking towards the unloading dock, and this second harvester is going to the waiting point because the unloading dock is currently not available. As soon as the unloading dock becomes available, This other harvester is going to seek towards that unloading dock. It's still not available because this harvester is still within the trigger area. So we'll let that change and there we go. Now it's seeking towards the unloading dock. As soon as it gets done unloading the gold, it just starts back from the beginning again. There's another behavior tree set up and this one is on the turret. The turret has a pretty basic behavior tree. The very first thing that it does, it, it checks to see if there are any units which we will create at the barracks are within distance of it. Now, since these units are dynamically generated, we can't just set an array like we did with the gold fields. Instead, we need to set this tag. So if any unit with the tag player on it is within distance, then this task will return success. So this task also sets this target variable, so this variable will, or this task will be able to determine if the target is alive. And then this task will actually fire on the projectile, or will fire on the target. So when this task returns success, it will assign the target variable to a unit, and then this task will determine if the unit is alive. If the unit is alive, it will fire a projectile on it, and then it will wait a second just so that it's not continuously firing rockets at it. It will keep doing this until the unit died. 
and then this until fail will return false, and then this within distance will run again, and then it will find a new target. So this, this turret doesn't really have anything to do unless we create some units. So let's create, what, four units. And we can see those units right here. They're kind of hard to see. So you can see here that they also have a behavior tree on them. And we'll just go ahead and pause it for now. And the very first thing that this behavior tree does is it sets the target to the turret. And it does that by doing a game object fine because these units are dynamically instantiated. It can't contain a reference to the scene object. So it will find whatever target it's looking for and then assign that value to the target variable, which is a transform value. Now it will then take that value and it will ask if the turret is alive. And if that turret is alive, it will then run this external behavior tree. This external behavior tree is just a convenient way to run multiple tasks at once. So if the turret is alive, then we want to attack it. If the turret is not alive, then we want to attack the power plant. And in this case, we want to run the same exact attack methods. And those attack methods are described in this attack uh, behavior tree. And this behavior tree is dynamically loaded when the behavior tree starts. And the very first thing is, it does is it gets the target variable, which is assigned from the unit. So you notice here that we have this target variable here. So it will use the target that was initially set right here and assign that value right here. This next attack position task will then determine an absolute position based off of that target variable. After we determine the position that we are moving to, we are then going to be playing an animation, like a walking or a running animation, and then we are going to actually start moving towards the target. Once we arrive at the target position, we are then going to play an attacking animation, which in this case I didn't have an actual attacking animation, so I'm just playing an idle animation. And then we will do the, a similar group of tasks that the uh, turret ran and it will just basically keep checking to see if the target is alive if it is alive then it will fire the projectile and then it will continue then it will wait a second and then it will just keep checking this over and over again until the target is not alive or until the unit dies in which case the behavior tree stops running as well so let's go ahead and see this in action I'll go ahead and click on the turret and we can watch its behavior tree. So let's go ahead and hit play. And now I'm going to switch cameras and I'm going to hit attack. So the units are currently attacking the turret and the turret is attacking the first unit that it found back. And so they are going to keep doing that. So the, the units or the turret's rocket is a little bit more powerful than the unit's rocket, so the turret ends up winning out. And so now the turret has been destroyed because there are enough units to be able to destroy the turret. In this case, we're just deactivating the renderer. The, looks like the, uh, the trigger is still alive. But now this next, let's see, the unit will now start attacking the power plant. So now it moves towards the power plant and starts attacking it. And so there we go. It's going to keep attacking it until it's destroyed, and then it will restart again. So that's the real-time strategy sample project.